You really should vape. You just don't know what's in those things. Hello there, and welcome to Social Autopsy, where we kill popular ideas and extract a new perspective. I'm Rob Dyke, and I'm a hypocrite. But don't get too giggly. So are you. Hypocrisy, claiming to uphold morals and values while your behavior says otherwise. It's like when your dad tells you to stop procrastinating, but he still hasn't fixed the car that's been sitting out in the front yard for like eight months, and it's just rotting like some redneck lawn ornament. Dad. There's no doubt that when we think of somebody as a hypocrite, we think of them as a generally unlikable person. But you need to start being more careful, and one experiment gives you a reason why. Conducted at Northeastern University, this hypocrisy experiment took a single group of just over 40 people and presented them with two activities. The first activity was entertaining and less stressful. The second activity was boring and considerably harder. Now, each test subject is told to choose one activity for themselves. Whichever activity they don't pick will be passed on to another test subject that they don't know. And the test results aren't exactly surprising. 85% of the test subjects chose the first, more fun task, leaving the unknown test subject they were paired with to complete the much less appealing task. Well, that's certainly not a cool thing to do. It's also not hypocritical either, but we aren't done yet. Following this experiment, another experiment took all the same test subjects and now had them watch others complete the experiment they just had. And when the new test subjects picked the easier task for themselves, they looked down on this behavior and believed it was, to a degree, shameful. The same people who picked the easier task for themselves were suddenly not okay when others picked the easier task for themselves. Now maybe this doesn't apply to you. You wouldn't be caught dead in that 85%, would you? Well, I still think you're a jerk. But what does that say exactly? What do you think of a person who judges your actions? Someone who vocally disapproves of your lifestyle? I'm willing to bet most of you dislike that person. You try to avoid them and discredit them, and you probably even vocally speak out against them, if even only privately. But isn't that itself a form of being judgmental? You formed an opinion or a conclusion about that person, and that's what judging someone is. And people tend to hate people who judge, or judge negatively anyway. Or how about this? What do you think about a person who's lied to you? Betrayed your trust? Well, chances are you've also judged that person, but not only that, you're also a hypocrite if you've ever told a lie in your life. What makes your lie any more acceptable than theirs? The truth of the matter is, we're all hypocrites. Simply go out into the world and you'll see it. Drive by a hospital and you'll see nurses and doctors puffing away at cigarettes outside or perhaps loading up on awful cholesterol-filled food in the cafeteria. How about police officers that speed just for the sake of speeding or turning without using a turn signal? Aren't they breaking the laws they're enforcing on others? The important thing to overcoming a problem is to admit that you have one. Okay, all right, so maybe you're still not on board. Maybe you're an exception to the rule. Well, let's cue cognitive dissonance, and it's something you really probably should be aware of. Cognitive dissonance is that icky feeling you get when you have conflicting beliefs at the same time, but it's also that icky feeling you get when you're confronted with new information that contradicts your current beliefs. It's that thing that gets people to vote in politicians for multiple terms, even if they're shown irrefutable evidence that the person is a total douche dumpster. They just can't admit that they were wrong to support the person to begin with, and therefore actively participate in degrading society just because they can't admit that they were wrong. So in other words, it's not exactly something you want to be associated with too often. We as people honestly need to all start admitting that we're hypocrites in one way or another. It's all a part of growth and change, evolving as a human being. As time goes on, our opinions and beliefs change. What we believed once might not apply 20 years later. But don't you worry, just because someone's a hypocrite doesn't mean they can't offer good, solid advice. I mean, if a fat person tells you that you shouldn't eat Chinese takeout every day and you should stop not going to the gym, is that not solid advice? Even if that person is engaging in those exact things that they're telling you not to, sometimes a hypocrite's wisdom is actually our best hope. 
Sometimes we need to see the effects of the wrong thing in order to understand why it's important. Like seeing a drug addict withering away from the effects of their addiction. To see it and hear their advice not to do drugs is more powerful than a non-addict telling you not to do drugs. See, the important thing is just to not let your natural hypocrisy negatively impact another person's life. And the golden rule holds true. Maybe. And if after all this, you're still an exception, you're still not a hypocrite. No, not you. Well, uh, I don't think you're even watching this video because I don't believe caskets get Wi-Fi. That's all for now. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. And also, if you want to learn more things you weren't prepared to admit, please subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next time.